and welcome everyone to this report on the state of Washington's pension system for Stanford's Finance and Retirement and Pensions MOOC. This is brought to you by Team Western Washington and I'm Todd Uzaria. In addition to gathering the required information for our team project, we also interviewed a board member from the Washington State Investment Board. We interviewed the state actuary for the state of Washington, and we talked with the communications director for the Department of Retirement Systems. And we also had an exclusive interview with President George Washington. And it's an honor to be joined today with the father of our country and for whom our state is named, President George Washington. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure, Todd. Well, I want to get some insights from you. Is it important from your standpoint for the state of Washington to have a healthy pension system in order to provide a pension benefit to state employees upon retirement? Yes. And is it important for the health of that pension system be communicated in a clear and effective manner to the taxpayers and all stakeholders involved? Well, of course it is, Todd. Hmm. Well, President Washington, thank you very much for your insights today. And in talking about the Washington State Pension System, it's a system with $75 billion in assets and there's 486,000 participating members and it's relatively healthy. State Budget Solutions did a report that showed that the Washington system was the fifth best funded system in the U.S. and in terms of unfunded liabilities as a percent of state gross product, Washington ranked seventh. And the Pew Center on the States did a study that showed that Washington's pension system was the fourth best funded nationally. And in terms of funds, Washington State is unique and they've done well. The mission for the Washington State Investment Board is to maximize returns with prudent risk. And in talking with the Washington State Investment Board member, he says they're unique because they have a high asset allocation to private equity, 24%, and real estate, 14%. They are confident that they can beat market returns with their private equity holdings, even after fees. And the fund's good performance was shown in a Bloomberg study that looked at tenure returns, and Washington's was shown to have the highest return of public pension systems of over $20 billion in assets. They attributed that to the high allocation of private equity and real estate. So the system has done well. A question we have is what is the level of risk relative to market index funds with this asset allocation. In our analysis, we have two concerns, but both of them appear to be addressed through legislation. The first concern having to do with an underfunded situation of the two oldest funds in the system, the Public Employees Retirement System Plan 1, PERS 1, and the Teachers Retirement System Plan 1, TERS 1. Um, they're underfunded at 69% and 79% funded ratios. The second concern that we had has to do with the discount rate being set by the state legislature at a rate of 7.9%. Now, in terms of showing how our first concern is being addressed, this slide shows the funded status of the different pension plans uh, throughout the years, all the way back to year 2000. And you can see that there's two plans, the PERS Plan 1 and the TERS Plan 1 have uh, funded ratios of 69% and 79% respectively. You could also see that going back to the year 2000, they were fully funded, um, but in more recent years, they've become gradually more underfunded. So even though the overall funded ratio for the state is 101%, these two plans are underfunded. And to help address this situation, legislation was passed back in 2009 to gradually increase the employer contribution rates. So you can see on this slide that the current contribution rate, and this was as of 2012, for PERS was 7.05%, and for the 2013-15 biennium, it's going up to 9.03%. You could also see the contribution rates for TERS is also increasing, and the state actuary estimates with uh, this legislation that PERS 1 will be fully funded in 2027 and TERS 1 will be fully funded in year 2026. Now let's talk about how our second concern is being addressed and that is of the discount rate being set at 7.9% also set by the state legislature. 
I did talk with the state actuary and he told me that he feels it's a more typical system in other states where the state actuary would work closer and closely with the state investment board to set that rate. Um, in Washington, uh, the state actuary works with the state legislature to set that rate. And you can see that currently in law, it's 7.9%, but also currently in law, it's due to decrease to 7.8% in 2015 and 7.7% in 2017. The state actuary recommends further uh, reductions down to 7.5% uh, beyond that 2017 biennium. The state actuary's recommendation is based on simulations he's performed uh, about future investment returns based on current asset allocations. You can see here that the expected return over the next 15 years is 7.49% and 7.4% over 50 years. And this slide shows the funded status sensitivity to that discount rate being used. Um, and remember, we talked about the underfunding of PERS Plan 1 and TERS Plan 1 being 69% uh, and 79% using a 7.9% discount rate. Uh, the top table shows uh, the funded status. If we use a 6.9% discount rate, the funded status goes down to 64% and 73%. Uh, so there is some sensitivity there. Uh, so to wrap up this discussion about discount rate, um, you know, we would like a lower discount rate, especially uh, related to other rates like municipal bond yields. Uh, but at least there is in law uh, plans to continually decrease this discount rate. And there is some basis for setting that rate based on simulations of current asset allocation. Now, in terms of policy recommendations, there's two challenges that we see, and we'd like both of them addressed. Uh, through policy. The first one has to do with um, setting safeguards in case the health of the pension system uh, goes south. Um, so as right now the, the health of the pension system is relatively healthy, but we don't see any particular safeguards for legislation to kick in automatically if unfunded ratios get uh, to a certain level. And so we support legislation that would set some of those safeguards uh, in those events at some point in the future. The challenge has to do with making reports to all stakeholders, whether they be the, the taxpayers, the public employees, people making decisions about the funds, make those reports much clearer, much more effective, uh, and that will lead to a, a healthier situation. Because right now I interviewed a board member from the Washington State Investment Board. He says that the Washington State system suffers from bad publicity, not so much from poor health of the Washington State system, but because of the bad publicity and poor health of other states and other municipalities that have been having um, pension health problems. I talked with the state actuary, and he also says there's a need for clear reporting. He says that Washington has a good story to tell, but most people don't know about it. And he says he's a math guy, not an English major. So there's a clear need to improve the reporting on the state's pension system health. Again, not to replace the CAFR, but to have a report that's standardized that lays on top of the CAFR. This is how we currently feel about how pension health is reported. And this is how we'll feel about how pension health is communicated after our recommendations are implemented. And in our first step on recommendations for improving communication of pension health, we want to follow closely the research being done by the Society of Actuaries. They're doing some very interesting work on developing dashboards on making pension health information more easily reported and understood. This dashboard is an example that was reported in October 2013 using some information from Colorado. The first page shows demographic indicators, investment policy, and investment returns. We really like uh, the long-term view here because you can see the data goes back 15 years. The second page of the dashboard has some interesting stuff as well with funding indicators, funding ratios, plan maturity indicators, and what looks really interesting, plan sensitivity indicators, something that we're working on uh, you know, for this project sponsor indicators, and related indicators. Again, all these are going back 15 years. 
And the last page of the dashboard has actuarial methods and assumptions and a summary of benefits. Uh, we applaud this effort in terms of research being done on how reporting of pension help can be improved. And an idea that we'd like to see incorporated on reports on pension health is to make it more visual. This is an example from marketwatch.com for personal retirement, uh, but it's a visual way to track your retirement. On this, you can uh, adjust things like your current age, your retirement age, your salary, uh, savings rate. But we envision that ideas like this can be incorporated into pension health reports where we look at sensitivity of market returns, the discount rate, uh, the contribution rate, and also uh, look at different assumptions, whether the plan is frozen or continuing on an ongoing basis. We think a visual representation can make the reports much clearer. So in closing, here is our specific recommendation for improving communication of pension health. First is to follow the Society of Actuaries research on dashboard development. And we also want to see how we can incorporate um, more visual, more interactive ways of reporting pension health. Second would be to discuss with Washington State Actuary, Matt Smith, to see how simplified reports can be used. Third, discuss with the Department of Retirement Systems Communication Director, David Bryan, to see how these reports can uh, improve their communication with the public employees. And fourth would be to work with Washington State Investment Board member David Nirenberg to see how these new reports can improve the communications that they have with their stakeholders. This concludes our report on the state of Washington's pension system brought to you by Team Western Washington. Thank you very much for your attention.